Once we've learned how to factor out the greatest common factor, or GCF, of a polynomial, we're ready to learn another factoring method called factoring by grouping. Let's take a look at an example. Let's factor x cubed minus 6x squared plus 3x minus 18. First, I want us to notice that we cannot factor out a greatest common factor because x cubed and 18 don't have anything in common that we can pull out. The only common factor there is 1, and pulling out 1 doesn't help us. So we can't use the GCF method here, but this one's going to work very well for grouping. In particular, when we have four terms in a polynomial, grouping is a good method to use. The way that we use grouping is by first separating our terms into two groups and factoring each group individually. So first, let's look at x cubed minus 6x squared, and let's pull out the GCF there. We notice that x cubed and 6x squared both contain an x squared. So we factor out the x squared, and when we do that, we're left with x and then minus 6. Now let's look at the next group, 3x minus 18. Both of those are divisible by 3, and I'm going to bring down the plus because we do have a plus in between these groups. So we're going to factor out the 3 from 3x minus 18, and when we do that, the leftovers are going to be x minus 6. Now, we notice here that something interesting happened. Both of the groups have a common factor of x minus 6. In fact, we could call that the greatest common factor among the two groups. And so we're going to pull that out front, just like we usually do with a greatest common factor. And then after we've done that, we look at the leftovers and we see that we have x squared and positive 3 as leftovers. So we're going to have x squared plus 3 as our leftovers in parentheses. And our factored form here is going to be x minus 6 times x squared plus 3. In general, when we're factoring by grouping, we put the first two terms in one group and the last two terms in another group. We factor out the GCF of each group separately, and then we should have a common factor among the two groups. We can put that common factor of the groups out front, and then in parentheses afterwards, we put the leftovers. Let's take a look at another example for grouping. Let's factor x squared plus 15 plus 3x plus 5x. Again, there's no GCF that we can pull out of all the terms, so we're going to use grouping here because there's four terms, but we run into a little bit of an issue. For the first group, x squared plus 15, the only thing that those two terms have in common is 1. So we can pull out 1 as the GCF, and then we keep the x squared plus 15 as leftovers. Then let's look at the next group. We've got plus. If we look at 3x plus 5x, both of those contain an x. So we can pull out an x, and that gives us 3 plus 5 as leftovers. But if we look at what we have inside the parentheses here, we don't have the same thing inside the parentheses like we did in the last problem. In the last problem, we had an x minus 6 inside both of the pairs of parentheses, so they matched, but here they don't. Now, that doesn't mean that we can't factor this polynomial. It just means that we can't factor it in the way that it already is. But we have a tool that we can use to make things easier to work with. 
what we can do is we can actually rearrange the order of the terms to put it in an order that works out better. And the general rule of thumb is that if you need to rearrange the terms for grouping, it's generally going to be best to put it in standard form. So we're going to start with the x squared. That's the highest degree term. That's going to come first. Next, we've got the 3x and the 5x. And it doesn't actually matter which one goes first. You could put plus 5x and then plus 3x. Or you can do plus 3x plus 5x. Doesn't matter. And then the constant term, that 15, is going to come last, plus 15. And now that we've rearranged the terms, if we try grouping, it's going to work out much more nicely. In the first group, x squared plus 5x, they have a common factor of x. And when we pull that out, the leftovers are x plus 5. Then in the second group, 3x plus 15, those both contain a 3. And when we factor out the 3, we're left with x plus 5. Now here, we notice that we do have the same thing inside each set of parentheses. So that becomes the greatest common factor of the groups. And we can pull that GCF out front. And then we take the leftovers, which are x and positive 3, and we put those in parentheses. And so we have x plus 3. That is the second factor. And so our final answer is x plus 5 times x plus 3.